Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at more prayers of the faith, and this time, the Novena to the Holy Spirit. Generally, novenas are prayers and devotions that are recited for nine days in a row in order to accomplish some purpose, and this novena is most often used just before Pentecost, though it can, of course, be prayed at other times as well to draw closer to the Holy Spirit. Let's take a look at what this novena has to say. Holy Spirit, third person of the Blessed Trinity. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, not in the sense of being younger than the others, he is eternal and has always existed, just like the other persons of God, but in the sense that we list him third. This is for at least two reasons. First, he was the third person of God who people became aware of. First they knew God was a father, then Jesus was revealed to be the Son of God, and after that, Jesus revealed that the Holy Spirit could be sent and was also God. The second reason is that this is the order that Jesus himself gives when he lists the persons of the Trinity. Going, Going therefore, therefore, teach ye all nations, nations baptizing, baptizing them in the name of the, of the Father, and of the, and Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Matthew 28, 19. Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit is called this in John 16, 13. Love, love meaning charity, and as 1 John 4, 8 says, God is charity. So the Spirit of God is also the Spirit of love, and the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Therefore, he's also the spirit of love. And holiness. Romans 1.4 refers to the spirit of sanctification, which carries the same meaning as holiness. Proceeding from the Father and the Son. This has the same meaning as the filioque, which we discussed in episode 450. Check the link in the video description. And equal to them in all things. The Holy Spirit is in no way less perfect than the Father or the Son. I adore you and love you with all my heart. The word adore implies adoration, worship reserved for God alone, meaning that by extension, the Holy Spirit is really God. Dearest Holy Spirit, confiding in your deep personal love for me, I am making this novena for the following request, if it should be your holy will to grant it. We trust in the love of the Holy Spirit, who is love himself, to weigh our request and grant it if it's his will to do so. We then make whatever request the novena is being prayed for, and move on to the next part. Teach me, Divine Spirit, to know and seek my last end. Help me to pursue heaven over all other things. Grant me the holy fear of God. Again, this refers to great respect and reverence, as well as fear of offending God. Grant me true contrition and patience. Do not let me fall into sin. Help me to be sorry for my sins, and endure the difficult task of resisting further sin, in this world of imperfection and evil temptations. Give me an increase of faith, hope, and charity. The three virtues listed in 1 Corinthians 13.13. 13. And bring forth in my soul all the virtues proper to my state of life. Everyone can make use of any virtue for their benefit, but depending on what your life is like, some virtues may take different forms. For instance, the fortitude of a soldier and the fortitude of a baker are different, because each has different things that they need to endure. Make me a faithful disciple of Jesus and an obedient child of the church. Faithfulness to Jesus, rejecting all other gods, and obedience to the teachings of the faith are both requested here. Also, we see here the claim that we're children of the church. In John 10.30, we see that Jesus is God. Paragraph 1243 of the Catechism says that we become children of God when we're baptized. Finally, Colossians 1.24 says that the church is the body of Christ. So when we become children of God, we become children of Jesus and also children of the church. Give me efficacious grace, sufficient to keep the commandments and to receive the sacraments worthily. We request enough grace to do what's needed in order to faithfully live in holiness as God wants us to. Give me the four cardinal virtues. Fortitude, Prudence, Temperance, and Justice, Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1805. Your seven gifts, Wisdom, Understanding, Counsel, Fortitude, Knowledge, Godliness, and Fear of the Lord, read Fear of Offending the Lord, Isaiah 11, 2-3. Your twelve fruits, Charity, Joy, Peace, Patience, Kindness, Goodness, Generosity, Gentleness, Faithfulness, Modesty, Self-Control, and Chastity. 
Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1832. Raise me to perfection in the state of life to which you have called me. Help me to reach heaven, which you want me to reach. And lead me through a happy death to everlasting life. As we discussed in episode 471, link in the video description, a happy death means that when we die, we are made happy by going to heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We recognize that these things all happen because Jesus sets them in motion. This novena is very dense with meaning and with references to all sorts of things that we know about the Holy Spirit. It's full of petitions, but also titles for the Holy Spirit, showing that we want to treat him with great respect, and even contains an explicit statement that we worship the Holy Spirit due to him being God. Next time, what is Tontemergo? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.